Hello and welcome to my workshop. In this video, I'm going to show you how to take a picture just like this. You may recall my previous video where I photographed a pen and in that video we built the setup from start to finish. In this video, everything is already set up and hanging by a thread, so we're going to look at the setup and slowly dismantle it and show you the various components. Now, without further ado, let's take a look at the camera. And this is my camera setup. This is Panasonic Lumix GX85 and at the front I have the stock lens which is G-Vario 12 to 60 millimeters. I also created this little doohickey for it. This little doohickey is important because I need a specific focal length. And because the space is so small and I need to use both my hands to adjust the setup, there is always the possibility of me kicking the tripod, bumping the camera and in a flash of a second lose that focal length. So I built it as a stopper to prevent the lens from retracting and thereby losing my focal length. At the back, I have this particular monitor and as you can see, I used scotch tape to mark the relative positions of the pen and the cap. That way, in case I need to retake images, I kind of know the relative positions of each. To the hot shoe, I have this little transmitter that triggers all my strobe lights. So I have two on either side, or one on either side, and one at the back. The one at the back was primarily used to give me background color, and right now I have the yellow tint to it, so let's take an image and see what it looks like. There you can see the yellowish tint. Uh, for the image, I found the gray is the most striking color, so for the images, I didn't turn the backlight on. Now that we know more about the camera, let's move to the actual setup. Earlier in the video, I mentioned everything is hanging by a thread and here it is. This particular fishing wire is holding the pen in place and any minor touch to it is causing the pen to swing. And now I have to wait a few minutes for everything to come to rest before proceeding. To take away all the reflections from the workshop, I have this particular cone and the viewing hole of the cone is right here at the bottom because that's where I'm taking the image. And here is a side view. For the reflective surface, I am using two sandwiched plexiglass sheets and in between is black paper. Originally, I started with clear paper like this but then I discovered that the black paper gives me much better contrast. Now, this clear plexiglass created a ghost and more on that later in the video. On the side and the back, I have those sheets and those are to take away the unwanted reflections that come through the minor gaps between the plexiglass and the cone. The entire setup is on top of a tote, on top of my workbench, so that it brings it up somewhat to eye level and I don't have to kneel to make minor adjustments. Now we're going to talk about the ghost a little later in the video, but now let's go to the computer and check all the images. Here we are at the computer and let me talk about the main images that I used in creating this image. So this is my base image that has all the right reflections and a few wrong ones. Uh, one of the wrong ones is the black reflective strip that goes over the top of the wood and we see it's clearly visible. To combat that, I took a similar image without that black reflective strip on the left hand side and the wood from this image is basically what is substituted right here. Uh, of course, it's a given that I had to remove the fishing wire and all the traces of it that is on here and on the pen that we see. So let me just blow it up to 100% and we can see it more clearly. So this is the reflection of the fishing wire onto the pen and that got removed. Uh, the other thing that had to be done was the cap. And as we can see, we have a few reflections right here that kind of interrupt the proper gradient onto the metal piece. And that's why I took a image without anything else, just the cap. And we see that the gradient is nice and smooth. And now, once I blow it up to 100%, we can talk about the ghost that I mentioned earlier. 
So we have the cap right here. This is the top reflective surface. But when we look down right here and right here, we begin to see a second reflection of the gold parts and also some of the silver parts that are right here. And it creates that little ghost that is happening right here. The so-called ghost is created because the clear plexiglass that I was using technically has two reflective surfaces. One is at the top and the other one is at the bottom. And depending on how thick the plexiglass is, is going to be more or less pronounced. I tried to eliminate the ghost by lowering and lowering the camera, but as we can see in the next series of images, it minimized it, but it didn't eliminate it. And it also changed the viewing angle, so I couldn't use a series of images to combine them into one. So I looked around the house to see what I can use, and then I saw this. <laughs> my phone technically so it, when it's turned off it has a nice reflective solid black color and it's also big enough for the cap now it's not big enough for the entire setup so I couldn't retake the images with the phone as the base so that's why I took only the cap now this is the subsequent image and we'll see that the ghost is completely eliminated now I'm gonna tell you a little secret uh, I tried to take the reflection of the nib as well, but I was never able to get the right tilt, orientation or reflections on the nib. Taking a look at this image, we can see the differences between the original photo and the photo where the phone is used as the base. Obviously, because of the differences, I can't really use it. And even though I tried to realign it, it didn't work out. And this is how I took this image. Majority was the setup. And of course there is post-processing and in the future I'll be minimizing the post-processing because I already invested in solid color reflective surfaces and I'm waiting for them to arrive. I may retake the image or use a different object to do so to increase my portfolio. If you like this video, make sure to like, share and subscribe and also hit the notification bell to get notified of my future video releases. Also follow me on all social media channels, consider supporting me on Patreon and definitely support me for the great psycho challenge where I raise funds for kids' cancer. All the links are down in the description.